Hello everyone and welcome back to Maytech. Today we have the auto pass through system for the We Create Vision and I'm going to show you how to use this system to make this which is a large map and it's mounted to the backing with standoff so that's the project we're going to do today. Just before we jump into the project if you could please subscribe to the channel and help us grow that would be greatly appreciated. All right let's get into this. Now, if you've never seen one of these pass-through feeders before, what they allow you to do is run long pieces of material into your laser engraving machine. This allows you to greatly increase the working length of your machine. With this We Create Auto Pass-Through feeder, the length is increased to 145 inches or 12 feet. This system uses these roller rails to support the extra length of material. These rails clip onto the end of each other, allowing you to adjust them to the length of the material you are using. So essentially, this system allows you to turn your small laser cutter into a machine that can work with much larger material. This not only allows you to work on very long projects, but it also allows you to do production work. For example, if you want to feed in enough material to say cut 100 Christmas ornaments. If you want to find out more about this We Create Auto Pass Through system, I will have a link in the description below that you can check out. Let's have a quick look at the material we're going to use for this project. For the backer, I'm going to use this laminated board. You can find these at your local hardware store in different sizes. This particular one is 16 inches wide and made from white wood. For engraving the map, I'll be using this 1 8 or 3 millimeter thick plywood. You should also be able to find this at your local hardware store or a similar 1 8 plywood. For mounting the map onto the backer piece, I'll be using these standoffs here. You may be able to find these at your local hardware store also, but if you can't, I will have a link to them on my blog, which you can reach from the description below. To use this pass-through system, you start by feeding the material into the front. You'll see that there are grid marks set up to either side of the feeder opening. It's important that you line your material up parallel to these grid marks. That way the material will feed straight into your machine. Once you've fed the front end of your material into the machine, you now want to tension the rollers. You do this by tightening the top knob on the side of the machine. You will tighten the knob until you get the proper tension reading on your tension guide located here on the front. The proper tension for different thicknesses of material can be found in the manual. Once your tension is set up, you'll want to feed at least 10 centimeters of material into your machine. To create the map for the engraving process, you'll want to use one of the many map generation websites out there. To generate the map that I'm using in this tutorial, I use a site called Cardo Cuts. This site is a paid website, but it does have a lot of great features, including the ability to generate these really cool map contour lines. It also allows you to easily change the size of the map and add and remove features as needed. Another popular map generation site is called Snazzy Maps, which is completely free. Here you basically pick one of the styles. It will then generate the map for you and then you can scroll over to the part of the world where you would like to generate the map from. You can also go into the features area where you can add, remove, and adjust features as needed. After you've generated your map, you'll want to import it into the WeCreate Make It software. I've also went ahead and drawn this triangle here with tabs at the bottom and the top for the standoffs to fit into. This triangle will be the cutout line that my WeCreate follows to cut out the map. For settings, to engrave the map, I'll be using a power of 100, a speed of 125, and I'll be using a line density of 90. I will also have the image algorithm set to gray. For the cut, I will have the power set to 100, the speed set to 7. When using the pass through, it's also important that you have this add breakpoints turned on. This will keep the area you intend to cut out from completely detaching from the rest of the plywood. 
In this way, the cutout area will continue to follow the rest of the plywood through the feeder without jamming the feeder up. I have my number of breakpoints set to 20 and the size set to 1. Of course, the number of breakpoints you have and their size will be dependent on the material you use. I'm now going to take the cutout area and I'm going to place that on top of the map. Next, I'm going to go up to this drop down and I'm going to enable the auto pass through feed option. You can now see that my canvas has changed to be a lot longer. I can now take my map and overlay it on top of the material that I can see inside my machine. Once I have everything lined up to the way I want it, I can go ahead and start the engraving process. Once everything is completed, you'll need to go around your engraving and cut out each tab to remove the engraved area from the rest of the plywood. You can do this easily by using a utility knife and cutting down on the tab. Once you have the tabs all cut, You'll notice that there's these light areas where the laser didn't engrave the plywood because the tab was there. You can easily fill in these light areas using a furniture repair marker. These are available at most hardware stores and you can get them in many different colors. Next up, I'm going to wipe down the whole surface of my engraved map plywood using some rubbing alcohol and a cloth. This will remove the residue left behind from the lasering process. Now that my map has been cleaned, I'm going to lay it down on top of my backing board. I'm then going to mark out each one of these grooves with a pencil so I know where the standoffs are going to be. Then using these marks as a guide, I'm going to drill out pilot holes for each one of the standoff screws. It's now time to stain this backer board so it will contrast from the map that will be sitting on top of it. For the stain, I'll be using a black water-based product from Saman. Whenever I'm using a water-based stain, I like to spray the board down with a mist of water. This will keep the stain from drying too quick when you're applying it. As an applicator for the stain, I'll simply be using a small piece of sponge. Now that the stain has completely dried, I'm going to go ahead and apply a clear coat to both the backer board and the engraved plywood map. For the clear coat, I'll be using a painter's touch in a satin. So our clear coat has now dried and it's now time to install these standoffs. I've already went ahead and dropped the number four by half inch screws into the bottom of the standoff. These screws will be used to mount the base of the standoff into the backer board. In turn, the plywood map section is mounted to the top of the standoff using these bolts. With the standoffs all screwed into the backer board, the last thing that's left to do is to install the top bolt which will hold the plywood map into place. You'll want to screw these all down loose at first to make sure you get a fit on the map. You can then go back through and tighten each one. You don't need to go any more than hand tight when you're installing these. So I do hope you guys enjoyed this project. If you guys have any questions on the project itself, 
or on the feeder system for the WeCreate Vision, please make sure to leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you haven't done so already and make sure to hit that notification bell. Alright, we'll see you all again next time.